Okay, do not make this one mistake with energy gels that I made this week. I'm gonna show you and tell you how it impacted yesterday's race for the negative, how it impacts the rest of your training and racing, and what you can do to not just correct it, but to make it a strength so that moving forward, it's on your side and it's part of your A game so that you can run as fast as you possibly can. 90% of runners are not fueling optimally, both before and during the race. But I promise you, if you get these things right that I'm about to tell you, you'll improve your race times by up to 20 to 30%. And I can tell you that with confidence because I went from not being able to run 400 meters to being able to run a three hour 25 marathon. But then when I truly understood nutrition and implemented it, I went from three hours 25 for the marathon to two hours and 21 for the marathon. So I've got nine weeks until Abu Dhabi marathon. And this week I started to put nutrition into the game and therefore my intervals and long run would usually be fueled in exactly the same way that I'm gonna fuel. So if that's, if that's gels, great. If it's sports drink, great. Exactly the same fuel as I'm gonna use on race day. I practice with that in my interval sessions and my long runs. So that's what I did on my long run last Monday. Every 20 minutes I had a gel and therefore it's 75 grams of carbohydrate per hour and that's getting the stomach used to working at pace and at distance during the training so that I can metabolize that energy gel and get it working for me as fuel to push myself forward as energy during the race but also to stop the muscle breakdown or prevent as much muscle breakdown in the race and in training. And that's the key part. If you've got energy gels or sports drink, the right level of carbohydrate working on your side, you're able to push harder in interval sessions and long runs and exactly the same in the race. So you're not having the same level of muscle breakdown so that over three or four days, you can recover fully ready to go again. And it's that consistency that energy gels or that the right fueling with sports drink puts into your training schedule that allows you to be a way faster runner at the end of the training schedule. Last week, what I did was I got it right on Monday and I implemented that in the long run. Did 22 kilometers, some fast running, some hill running. The effort level that I wanted to hit in the race, I hit during the run and I was taking the energy gels in and thinking, great, this is working. And I felt not only energized throughout the run, but also not the same level of muscle breakdown. So that the next day was a rest day because I wanted, I always want a rest day after I've run fast. And then the, the recovery day, the easy run, the easy run, they went well. And I'm moving into yesterday's race, into the Sunday 10 mile road race, thinking, okay, it's gonna take me just less than an hour and I'm gonna need a gel at 20 minutes and a gel at 40 minutes, exactly what I'd done in training on the Monday, but I'd only done it once and that's the big mistake. So I've done this in past training schedules, but for this training schedule, it's been a, a couple of months at least since I worked with the optimal nutrition strategy. So come yesterday's run, when I took that first gel at 20 minutes, immediately I knew it. It just got into the stomach, was sloshing around, and then I needed to go to the bathroom, which impacted the level of energy that I had throughout the run, but after the race and after the sort of soreness in the muscles, I now need to not just take today as a rest day, which would have been normal, but tomorrow and probably Wednesday, so three days rest instead of the usual one day, and then back to training. Yesterday was a B goal. And so usually rest day, and then straight back into recovery run, easy run, and then interval day. So Thursday this week should have been intervals. And then again, probably Sunday or Monday next week would have been the long run. It's not gonna happen. And so what that will mean for this training week, which is a serious training week on the route to Abu Dhabi Marathon in nine weeks, is what it's meant is I'm only gonna have one quality session this week. So because, not because I pushed hard yesterday, but because I didn't have the right fueling strategy, I've now got to take 
extra rest days and therefore I don't want to chase my tail. I don't want to make another amateur mistake and try and quickly do an interval session and then a long run this week because it's in the training schedule, I've got to back off and I've got to be like, okay, so we want a session this week, but we also want enough rest days so that once I do that first recovery run, it feels like from the start of the run to the end of the recovery run, I'm enhancing, I'm accelerating recovery. And then the easy run the next day is me bridging the gap between the recovery run and the interval session. So ideally that will be around Saturday, if not Sunday. But it's important for me to be self-aware to know that yeah, I could push yesterday, but I could have pushed if that was entirely fasted. The race lasted 57 minutes. And so I could have done that completely fasted on no breakfast and no, no energy gels. But what actually happened was I had the right breakfast. So I had the five bananas blended in water, but I didn't get the gels right because I'd not practiced enough to get them into the stomach, metabolize them and get them to the muscles as fuel not just for energy in that race, which would have been really handy yesterday, but to stop the level of muscle breakdown that you typically get after a hard effort. When you're at you know, the top effort level and you're pushing your body, there's gonna be, especially flat or downhill, there's gonna be some muscle breakdown, especially you feel that soreness in the quads, you feel that dull ache in the quads, and then maybe you get DOMS, delayed onset muscles, and, and, and and you don't want that going into rest days and recovery days. You want to recover as optimally as possible. And the recovery, this is the key point, the recovery starts before the run. So the recovery starts from you being in the right situation to be able to run that race or run that hard session. So the right level of recovery before, but then the right breakfast, exactly the same breakfast as you'll be having in your A race. So always practicing with the same breakfast, no surprises on race day. And then the right nutrition plan. So for me, a gel in this situation, exactly the same, it's gonna be in Abu Dhabi, a gel every 20 minutes so that I'm getting 75 grams of carbohydrate. Because that's not happened, I've now got extra rest days and an increased recovery time before I can go hard again before I can go far again or before I can go fast again. And that's the key difference. The consistency over the training program of me going interval session hard. Okay, rest day, recovery day, easy day, long run day. The super compensation, the improvement is coming from the intervals and the long run. But it's about getting those together and consistently taking them off over the 13 week training program in order to put yourself in absolute optimal shape ready for race day. It's not about getting one B race right. It's not about getting one interval session right or one long run right. Anybody can do that. It's about the consistency over the training program that puts you in the best possible spot to get the most out of your body. It's incredibly important to not just learn from your mistakes, but some of those mistakes you will keep, it, you'll keep making. And you can get the nutrition perfectly. You could do exactly what you've done for the last six months, but for whatever reason, something is different and the nutrition doesn't go in in the same way and it is sloshing around. Maybe you've upset your stomach because you're in, in the final 10K of a marathon and your stomach, is, your metabolism is not working in the same way. Maybe you've taken too much carbohydrate or you didn't practice in the right way. But the key to minimizing that risk is to practice when your stomach, with getting the right number of carbohydrate per hour into your stomach when you're running fast on interval day and when you're running far on long run day. The more that you practice with that, the less stress that you have on race day because it's just like any other day. I didn't do that last week and I paid for it yesterday and today in that race.